Hello, my name is Ms. Ramirez, and in this video segment, we're gonna be doing a virtual scavenger hunt. So there's gonna be 12 things I want you guys to be on the lookout for as you watch this virtual EEC video. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys, and it might take just a second for me to get my desktop screen shared and uh, presenting my little PowerPoint. So this is the EEC scavenger hunt, and there's gonna be 11 things that you guys are gonna be on the lookout for. So the first thing is an abiotic or non-living element. So abiotic means anything that is not alive, never was alive, and never will be alive. Number two, a decomposer. So a decomposer is an organism that breaks down dead matter. So think about worms, mushrooms, bacteria, things that will be eating the dead plants and animals. Number three, a bird, so our feathered friends. Number four, a producer. Another word for a producer is an autotroph. So producer and autotroph mean the same thing. Examples would be plants and trees. They are things that make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. And then number five, an herbivore. An herbivore is simply a plant eater. So an animal that eats only plants. Number six, something red. And think about something natural in nature that is red. And I'm not talking about a red car. Um, number seven, moss, so that pretty green uh, moss that you might see in our video. Number eight, a pollinator. Number nine, a shadow. Number 10, scat. And scat is the science word for poop. And here at the Environmental Center, we have a lot of poop. Poop from both our pet animals in the classroom, poop from our livestock animals in the farm, and then poop from the wild animals that live in our woods and prairie. And then number 11, a natural resource. So something in nature, so something in nature that we use that's valuable for us. Um, and as you're looking for these 11 things, also take time to just pause, take out your nature journal and something to write with, and you can draw and write your observations. So what are some things that you're seeing? What are some things that you wonder? And then you can also discuss these observations. Uh, so now would be a good time to either pause the video and write down these 11 things that you're going to look for, or if you have your phone handy, go ahead and take a picture of these 11 things so that you can use it for reference um, as you're watching the video. Now the video is about 15 minutes long. Uh, feel free to just play it and enjoy the sights and sounds of nature, or you can just skip through at your own pace. So I'm going to exit the PowerPoint and I'm gonna start the uh, actual, actual presentation. So let me find that presentation. And this is the start of our scavenger hunt. So I'm gonna close my little video off so that y'all can see everything. Those insects in that pond, those are whirly gig beetles. And they get that name because they swim erratically or crazy like. There's our beautiful pond. And I wonder what made that trail. Those white birds are the spoonbill ibis and they are hunting for food. Lots of fish inside that pond. I will say that pond is a transient pond. It's not always there. So right now it's actually totally dried up. All that green stuff is algae in that pond.
that's where our pond used to be. So you can see the water has evaporated. It's dried up. And the remains of some of our poor fish that died. There's a windmill and we actually use that windmill. It pumps underground water. So water that's under the ground, it pumps it to the pond. That is a horse apple, also called the Osage orange. It's not really edible, it's too tough and hard. Some of these video pics were taken back during um, early fall, right when we came back from um, the summer break. So it looks a little bit different now. There's not a lot of green out there anymore. And there is the notorious poison ivy. So leaves of three, leave it be, otherwise you will be super itchy. Look at those bees, they are amazing pollinators. So as they're drinking nectar, tiny yellow and orange pollen puffs are actually getting stuck to their legs. And as they fly from flower to flower, that pollen will get dropped off to help those other flowers and plants reproduce. I believe that is called flaming sumac because of that bright red color. It reminded someone of flames. So how do you think this area looks during the different seasons? What are some changes that you might see during the winter time, uh, during the spring, and during the summer? That is a type of scavenger. It's called a vulture, and it is a feathered bird. They have a good sense of smell, so they're actually flying around looking for dead animals to eat. They have a strong beak to tear into those uh, dead animals. We call that leaf litter. It's the top layer of our forest floor. You can see there's big, big leaves and sticks and branches. 
What do you think it's going to look like as I start to dig underneath the leaf litter? What are some changes that you might see? That beautiful stuff you see on that branch is lichen. And you might even spot a decomposer friend in there, a snail. That soil felt really sandy. <gasps> it's my favorite. I believe this is coyote scat. And if you look closely, you'll even see fur or hair. So this coyote found himself something yummy to eat. And um, you can see the hair of that animal. So usually the bones and the fur, the coyote's body can't digest it, so it comes out in its poop or its scat. So as scientists, they love to study scat because it tells us what animals live in our forest and it also tells us what they've been eating. Do you think all soil types are the same or are they different? Some of those grasses were as tall as I am. So this is actually remnants of the Blackland Prairie. It's one of the most endangered ecosystems of Texas. Unfortunately, a lot of this eco region um, was destroyed for urbanization and for cropland since it has nice rich soil. These are all deciduous trees. Um, deciduous trees have flat leaves and they lose their leaves during the fall and winter. Why do you think that is? So what is there less of during the fall and winter? This is an evergreen tree. It's a type of cedar or juniper tree. Now they get their name evergreen because they stay green pretty much all year round. Their leaves have adapted to less sunlight because their leaves are very needle-like, so it conserves more energy. I think that's an elm tree, the yellow one.
This is one of our calves. She's eating some pellets or grain. Grain uh, comes from a crop, it's a plant. So she only eats plant material. Loves grass and hay. These are our ducks. That is uh, one of our pigs. What do you think he's looking for? <gasps> this is a copperhead. So it's actually one of the venomous snakes that we have here in Texas and I happened to stumble across it as I was walking through. But look at that beautiful color. So it camouflages really well with the fallen leaf litter. So that's why it's, sometimes it's hard to see them. But they get the name copperhead because of the copper color of their skin. It really is a beautiful snake. You never want to touch it or go, go near it. You should always try and be respectful of the living things that you guys see. And that is actually a white-tailed deer. I happened to stumble across him one morning. And this is a little baby raccoon that was caught in the barn. We were just releasing him so that he was safe. We do have lots of wild animals out here. You can see our goat Jabez in that previous picture. And I think this young raccoon was just learning how to climb because he wasn't that good at it. I'm going to go ahead and stop our uh, video of our scavenger hunt of the EEC. I'm going to stop the share and um, that's all I have for you guys for our virtual scavenger hunt. Um, I do want to remind you though uh, that the Post Oak Preserve is actually across the street from our facility. The Post Oak Preserve is owned by uh, Dallas County and that is a public walking trail. Uh, so y'all are more than welcome to go and visit the Post Oak Preserve um, on your own to go walk those trails. Um, and that's all I have for you guys. Uh, we hope to see you sometime soon, hopefully.